you are water we are water we are one with all of life we know We are water. Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, day three of World Unity Week. Um, day three of the 99 days of peace through unity towards a thriving world for all of life and the second day of the side to side chat. And uh, today, as you uh, see, we're honoring water. And um, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Julie and Dot and Danielia for being here to be part of uh, the hosting. And um, today we again are going to be starting with a beautiful, very brief blessing from Grandmother Etin Sel and Universal Mother from Gabon, a beautiful blessing specifically dedicated to this day uh, from the uh, Mother Earth delegation organized uh, through the generosity of uh, the fountain and Yatima and Rain Lim. And let's start with this beautiful sacred blessing from Gabon. Thank you. So um, this is the second fireside chat and I see that people that were part of uh, our journey yesterday and new people and welcome everybody. Um, this is the fireside chat really brings together um, the foundations of life and eco governance and looks at the relationship between them and water has been such an important part of the foundations of uh, of eco governance, I would say. And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to share a little bit about uh, uh, the journey of water in the formation of eco governance. Um, and then uh, but we'll start with a little bit of med meditation inviting water to to be here with us. Uh, and then uh, for the second part, we'll go into um, uh, some of the principles, uh, some of the organizing principles of uh, water and eco-governance. So uh, I'd just like to invite in um, Dot and Julie to share their opening blessing, and then we'll begin. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. It's good to be here at this fireside chat as today's theme, found, well, the foundation of life, the theme for World Unity Week as we honor all the foundations of life is indeed water. That exquisite essence for all of us and, and all life. Water of life are we poured forth for all. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. 
And welcome back, everyone. Good to see everyone. I, um, Shelly just commented on my radiant blue this morning. I got dressed and just didn't think about it and left the house and went, oh, it's water day. Perfect. I, I wore blue. I wore my blue and just feeling into this vibrancy of that and just looking forward to all that's coming in this hour there's some really important pieces that we're going to introduce and um i'm i'm really looking forward to helping us just ground in some really important structure for us to come into right relationship and then and then again looking forward to not just world unity week with us here talking about coming into right relationship with water but the 99 days, uh, this journey that's ahead of us, that we take in what we're learning this week, take in what we're experiencing this week, and then allowing it, I mentioned it to Shelly, that it feels like this is a homeopathic dose of healing for us. And as we're bringing in each one of these days, and, and the beauty that goes with it, that it's really soaking into our bones, you know, just the, the depth of, of who we be. So as we move forward in the 99 days, we literally have the organizing structure we need to self-organize and, and really make a difference in the 99 days. We're going to continue to remind you that this we're taking this seriously, that this is a portal. This is a really important time on the planet for all of us. So. Yeah. Thank you, Shelly. I'm looking forward to today. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, before we begin with words, I would, with, with a more conceptual part, I'd really like to invite in water and to invite in our own personal connection with water, our personal blessing with water. So, I'm going to invite you into a little guided meditation to honor water. And, uh, and know that she's here with us always. And when we honor her consciously, she offers her magic even more radiantly. So just inviting you to close your eyes for a moment. And in this gentle sacred space we open our hearts consciously to the presence of water within us beyond us in all her radiant expressions and when it, in whichever expression she wishes to reveal herself to us here and now as we invite her and honor and thank her. And inviting you in this moment to really experience yourselves as water, as the water beings that you are. In whatever way that happens now, that fluidity, that intelligence, that consciousness that has been around since the beginning of time with all her radiant source codes embedded within every water molecule that makes up over 99% of who we are. We are water.
And perhaps as we just notice the myriad ways in which water nourishes us from the moment of birth and beyond, we may ask water for some message, for some sense of a pathway to learn individually, personally, and collectively how we may restore right relationship with her. And sensing this connectivity, this communion of consciousnesses as water with water. We ask to receive all we need from her. To nourish her in every way possible so that together we may manifest the fullness of our vital, radiant potential as life, as water beings. In mutual nourishment with all of life. and offering our heartful thanks, our heartful intention to continue this journey of learning, of honoring, of communion, of reverence, of service. I invite you to gently, at your own pace, open your eyes. Thank you, water. And just taking a moment to just let that settle. You may want to write something in the chat just to share something if something comes. And just very gently allowing that to continue to ripple within your being. I'd love to invite in Julie and Dot for any reflections you may have had. Mm. And breathing that, we'll do this, breathing that, pressing it into Gaia as we, as our hearts unite across distance here and in the one heart. And what flowed for me, you know, in my heart, I've always held three truths. The first is all is one, the great revelation of our time. The second, hylozoism, everything is alive. And the third, energy follows thought. 
And Shelley, when you just invited us to actually engage with water, it was as though I was in a waterfall, just this gentle, gentle waterfall. And I actually heard the words, energy follows thought. You know this. Live this with me. I'm grateful for the space between the words and the space between the sharings. We have space between ourselves and we are water. We are one. Thank you, God. Thank you. It's profound. Mm, what a gift. That was beautiful, Don, and so, so poetic. And this esoteric holding of, of our day today. And, and I was reflecting on a, a real more practical piece of how it's, it, to me, this is my experience. I'd love to hear people's experience in the chat, but water is the one foundation that's so, um, I'm just gonna say easy. It's easier to have that intimate experience and right relationship with water. Just like you said, the waterfall flowing over you, you know, jumping into a, a, a lake of water, drinking pure water. Like it's so easy to have that, that real, that, yeah, that real, um, palpable right relationship with water and get it like just out of 50 some years of brushing my teeth a couple months ago I heard don't use water when you brush your teeth I'm like don't use water and I began washing brushing my teeth with no water water was teaching me you don't need water to brush your teeth like let you know just real practical pieces from our relationship with water mm -hmm. in a way so um what I was hearing during that meditation was allowing water to lead, to teach us how to be in right relationship with fire and earth and air. And it's like, you know, even the, the message, um, I've been having dialogues with water and heard, bring more plants into this space, Julie. I'm like, oh, okay, more plants into this space, serving water. I'm like, okay, I could do that. So to me, um, water's kind of like that leader of those foundations it's easy and today i think we're gonna we're gonna get some real practical pieces that shelly's gonna share that help us too yesterday i i just mentioned it's earth it's like how that conversation with that right relationship with earth is a little different than water mm -hmm. and we'll find that every day as we move through these foundations so mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much mm -hmm. valerie in the chat as we take in julie's share says water is magical came to me mm. well that's a great segue to the story i have to share about water's magic <laughs> because water has indeed been very magical with me um over many years now you know i i never used to have any connection with water and i think the first time i ever um uh, understood that water was alive and conscious was through uh, masaru emoto's work which you probably all know where he shows how water responds to consciousness through the beautiful crystal work that he did and that blew me away it was so extraordinary and yet so familiar in on some level that I, when I used to teach around the world I used to carry his books with me and share it in every workshop I had to help people understand the impact of consciousness as you're talking about dot uh, of on you know on water and then learning that we are over 99 percent water molecules you know understanding the power of our thought on our well-being on our health and just that in itself is a message that was so profound that I, you know, I'm still unpacking it in terms of what that really means and how that needs to inform everything that we do. 
And while water is that most accessible, intimate uh, um, foundation of life, possibly, it's also so easy to take off for granted because yeah. we use her in so many unconscious ways during the day. And, you know, and, and she's so available that many of us in the West take, you know, who are privileged to have water out of a running tap, take yeah. her for granted. Like brushing my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> water. <laughs> so over the years, um, and, and I'm going to fast forward because, uh, you know, as I became more, uh, listening to water and water started coming to me in visions. And I began to, you know, Julie, yesterday you asked a question of what is my practice, you know, and, and I answered, I think uh, a different question, but the, one of the practices I have is doing a little bit what I did now, which is just being silent and present and inviting in that foundation of life to reveal what, what's ever is available and wanting to, uh, to be revealed in that moment and spend many hours, as I said, doing that. And water has, you know, come to me both on invitation and also in visions, which have led to very dramatic um, action in the world. So one piece that is, uh, you know, just also talking about how in these reflections, and, you know, I could talk about this for ages, I also very much recommend going, uh, if anyone wasn't present at the plenary today, there was a plenary with uh, Anne Polina and Pat McCabe, which was extraordinary and I don't you know I, I I just feel like there's so much wisdom and essence encapsulated in their sharing that anything I say would be redundant so just recommending you to go there and to to just hear that uh, deep connectivity and to also invite you to just be in a space of of loving inquiry with water, you know, around what does it mean to be everything from a snowdrop to, uh, you know, a snowflake to the ocean, from, you know, from uh, moving from the clouds to the sea and become that. And there's so much there with that will reveal itself. The story that I had with water as she began to talk to me more and more through the seven days of rest and also as I began this journey now in eco governance was that she was showing me her enormous healing and unifying potential for this time. And there was one particularly um, powerful vision I had, which was about three years ago, where I saw water as this vast unifying force. And I saw humanity organizing around water, unifying around water, that if there's anything that can bring us together, it is water. Remembering both in the, it, it was also at the beginning of COVID, I think that um, I had the vision um, and um and in this field of concern around health, of this and recognizing more and more the extent to which we depend on water for our health and our vitality, I felt there was more and more of a space to recognize the importance of really protecting and honoring water. And in the vision, I saw people un uniting around water as the primary medicine of our time. And what happened from there was that uh, I understood that what was being called forth was some kind of a universal law, a world water law. And Jan and I articulated a proposal for a world water law, and we shared it with certain people. Um, and that proposal has come out into the world two years ago and is gaining traction. And it feels so beautiful on this day of it actually came out for the first time during World Unity Week two years ago. Um, that was the world water law came out in a beautiful day, a whole day that we organized around water. And uh, we did the, the ceremony, uh, a blessing for water. And then last year, we did also initiated within World Unity Week, the Global Alliance for World Water Law. So within this context, as we bring together eco-governance and the world water law, which is an essential part of eco-governance, my invitation to everybody here is to really sense into how do we make the world water law a global reality. Mm. And I'm going to invite, um, I'm just going to say that the world water law has four very simple principles. It understands that we can't change the world law by law or country by country. Our systems are too corrupt and too, um, too flawed and too bureaucratic and too, um, what I would say, uh, profit driven by agendas to be able to do that. 
our system is fundamentally disconnected from the laws of life and the world water law comes to align human law with the laws of life. And it says we need to actually think out of the box because we don't have the years to go through the bureaucratic system. So if all of us unite, all humanity unites around water and and calls for and does everything that we can and organizes with love and wisdom in action with eco-governance principles, we actually can make a difference. So this is one of the first, I think, action-oriented possibilities. And I'm going to invite Jan to just put forward the very Shall brief... We? Yeah. As, yeah, go ahead. As he pulls that up, you said that water is considered our primary medicine. We're still dealing with a pandemic. I, let's make that our vaccine for immunization <laughs> I mean exactly first to me exactly Taking that into my heart beautiful dot because I'll you know just to remind us that eco-governance is a framework for self-organizing citizens um mm. for the benefit of all of life and it puts whole system health at the center of eco-governance nice. so the purpose of eco-governance is to cult to protect and cultivate the health and vitality of the planet and all its inhabitants for generations to come. And I'll say more about this tomorrow. But just that health and vitality piece and this world water law, you know, coming from a whole system health background, and this has been my curiosity all along is to say, how do we heal? How do we how do we activate a whole system healing response? And when we look at water, this is the way to do it because when we violate water at source, when we contaminate her, when we own her, when we violate her as we do earth, we are creating a domino effect throughout of, of disease and devastation throughout. And yet when we Let's love her, when we actually start to heal water at source, protect the waters and restore them to their pristine quality and enable their uh, vitalizing natural, you know, uh, it's not only immune capacity, but vitalizing capacity so that we can heal ourselves. Everything will heal. Our consciousness will be cleansed. Our agricultural systems will be cleansed. Everything, every, our, our, all our systems will transform simultaneously. So the four water principles you'll see in this little video, and we'll use that as we continue today to talk about how to make this a global reality. We are water. We, citizens of Earth, call for and commit to working together for the immediate and universal protection of all water. As the first vital step towards global cooperation for effective, worldwide social and ecological healing. The world water law requires the uncompromising protection and restoration of all natural water sources, watersheds, aquifers, lakes, wetlands, estuaries and oceans. The rewilding of ecosystems necessary for the restoration of the planetary water cycle. The guaranteed free access of all humans and animals to the natural uncontaminated water. The World Water Law calls all governments, corporations, communities and individuals fully accountable for their impact on all waters everywhere. This one law serves as a unifying foundation for all governments and citizens to work together with community-led wisdom and stewardship councils in ways that effectively serve the health and vitality of the whole. The World Water Law provides an essential foundation for aligning human laws with the original laws of nature. This global initiative honors the many water guardians around the world who have dedicated their lives to the protection and reverence of water on behalf of all life. Join the Global Alliance for a World Water Law. 
and, and add your voice, voice to make the world water law a global, global reality. Together, we rise for water. Together, we rise for all of life. We rise together. that maybe you want to just continue a bit that thought now around the health mm. I do but I'm can you hear my heartbeat <laughs> <laughs> May it beat in rhythm with the one heart and with mm -hmm. the heart of water. Yeah. So Jan put in the chat, 80% of all deaths in the global south are attributed to waterborne diseases. We have solutions to bring clean water to all. Let us invest in that. And as I place that in the field, Shelley, as you draw forth, you know, it really touched me when you said that water is our primary medicine. Of course it is. It's the elixir of life. It's the essence of life. So, yeah, as we work with that concept, our thoughts are real. I mean, our thoughts are so powerful. How we think about ourselves and life and water and health and all of that, it makes so much sense that we would move in the direction that so much of the planet is shifting in that we're not hearing about yet from many of us, like the three of us, and we're not seeing it out there in the media yet. But it's like from... Um, in the health area, so often now we hear the shift from illness to wellness and with that focus on wellness and thank goodness in the criminal justice system on the planet, we're realizing that shift from punishment to restoration. Thank goodness. And we could go on right in each of the areas. So yes, if water or since water <laughs> is the primary medicine, Let's think and speak and act through that lens. And then a world water law makes perfect sense, right? That where we all actually kind of sign on the dotted line of life, a contract with life and say, hmm, yeah, I'll, I will commit to this. So we activate the social will on the planet. Mm -hmm. That in turn activates the political will on the planet. It doesn't work the other way around. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Shelley, could could you just paraphrase the four principles? I think they're so important that if we could just bring them through and really ground each one of them, I think would be important. Mm, thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Dot, for all you shared. There's so much in that that I really look forward to deeper conversations around. So the four simple principles that I think are very hard to argue with. That uh, right. the first is we commit to the uh, uncompromising protection and restoration of all water sources, all water sources. It's not about one river getting rights and that another, you know, like, and then while, while everything is still at work elsewhere, all together everywhere saying now uncompromising. In, there's no compromise with water, you know. So let's think that into the field. Yeah. We're oh. used to talking mm -hmm. about you know, how many toxins are allowed in water. This is uncompromising protection and restoration of all water. We are putting is, that thought in the field. Store that pristine, vital, radiant source code in each of us and be, you know, everywhere. And you just said something really important. I want to pause because 
the first time you shared the world water law with me and you used pristine pure water and we were having a conversation i think we were on a radio show interview and and it was the difference between clean water or some of our efforts to say that and moving it in toward that pure pristine and there's a difference and you just mentioned it again it's like not so many percentage of this or this that can contaminate but literally restoring water to its pure state to its original codes as much as we can and we can and mm -hmm. we, can. we can we can so that's the first one you know and it's it's everything from the oceans to you know to the water that comes to our uh, to our glasses and that we're privileged to drink so the second one is rewilding the ecosystems necessary for the restoration of the planetary water cycle. This means understanding that we can't have clean water or water at all if we do, if the, the waters are intimately related to the trees and to the ecology, and that means the migration routes of animals and everything needs to be restored for us to get this glass of water in its natural flow so that it connects it and it's obvious i mean we know water is connected to the trees and the forests so what do we do in order to restore the hydrological cycle we also know that restoring the hydrological cycle is the most effective way to restore the climate Ooh. So let's put the that in the, the most effective that. way. And there's extraordinary information on that. We have been conditioned to look at climate through the very reductionist lens of carbon. We'll talk more about this on climate day, but the water is the most effective. Restoring ecological systems is extraordinary. What, what, what we've come across, and there's so much information on this, which is not being put in mainstream. We've been cond being conditioned to look at climate through very narrow and uh, I think, manipulated lenses to a large extent. So the one sentence we are now all going to think into the field is? Restoring of the ecological restoration needed for the climate, for, um, for restoring the hydrological cycle. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. The third, again, common sense obvious to ensure that all humans and animals have guaranteed access to natural, natural, uncontaminated water, natural as in nature's laws, nature's vibration, nature's frequency. So yeah, it doesn't that make sense? We can't have water at the expense of another being. Mm -hmm. That's not the way, that's not how water works. Water gives unconditionally to all beings and you know, it doesn't separate, well, you can have and you can't. So how do we relearn the law of water, that original law of water that nourishes all beings? Mm. Let's think that into the field. Mm. Water in its natural state, unclean and uncontaminated for all, all beings. All beings. And the fourth is to hold all governments, corporations, groups, and individuals fully accountable for our impact on all water everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, much of what's going on with water today, almost all of it, happens in secrecy, and it happens um, without any accountability because there is no accountability. Water is now being commodified on the stock exchange. The last pristine water sources are being attacked on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. People are risking their lives all over the world to protect their little water, their water sources. So this is because no one is held accountable. It's okay. They may pay a fine, but you know, a symbolic fine, but the money that they make of it is goes way beyond the, the some, you know, the symbolic fine that any anyone may pay for contaminating water. I mean, the laws, I won't go into them now, are ridiculous. You know, in the States, I mean, almost farmers are forced to use it. The, if they don't use their water, then they lose the water rights. Yes. So, and, you know, we here in the United States, uh, 
one of the voices that is really unpacking all of this and making it visible to us in profound ways is Tom Hartman. Mm -hmm. For those who might be familiar with Tom's work and do check it out. He's on uh, free speech radio and other places. But yeah, we're beginning to really understand what you're describing, Shelley. And so what is the, what is the sentence? What's the line that we are going to think into the field? Accountability for all for the, for our impact on water everywhere. Thank you. So as you can see, these four principles are so common sense, so obvious. If we're going to create a healthy community, humanity starts around a water source. And they look after that water source, especially, you know, when they realize how dependent they are. And it's not filtered through mediators. And um, so when we look at these, each of these four principles and all of them together, we can see how radical the water law is because actually it changes all sim systems simultaneously. Nothing can stay the same. Nothing. Thank goodness. And yet it's so clear that if we can achieve what we're achieving today in other directions, in terms of turning everything inside out for certain people to make profit, we can turn everything back in creative ways to ensure that everybody has abundance in healthy jobs that don't need to be involved in the toxicification and plundering of water. Mm. So, you know, there are ways of transitioning to healthy systems. And this is an activation which works with all other systems as part of eco-governance so that the entire system co-evolves with this as the law that precedes and supersedes all other laws. Because when this law is, you know, put at the center, then all other laws have to, you know, have to coincide, align with it. And any law that that goes against this becomes not legitimate. So this really has the capacity to transform all our systems simultaneously by just focusing. So as we take our water right now, and we invite everyone, wherever you are, if you have a glass of water and if you don't, grab one or imagine one. And every time, it's so practical, Shelley, for myself, one of my practices as I pour the water, as I take it from the tap, we're blessed with a well here, uh, as I take it from the tap or as I pour the water in, I just say thank you. Thank you for my health and well-being as I am one with you. And sometimes I even get really carried away and then I sip. So let's do that. We commune together on behalf of water. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Doth. That's beautiful. So, you know how in, invasive this world water law is in changing the whole system. I just want to reach out. I know a lot of those who are here with us are stewards of these foundations. They are in this right relationship and practicing this. And just like water can transform all of our systems, it's also uh, there's an invitation to see how water impacts our own passion projects. Like I, I go to our friend Andrew Harvey and, and he says, we find our sacred activism by what breaks our heart open. And if we look at what that is and follow the trail, we'll probably come back to water in its healing qualities for us, no matter what our advocacy is, even as we're looking at women and children and, you know, and, and equality on the planet and, and, and abuses and neglects, literally it is permeated and we can make an, an impact. And so water might not be your primary focus as you're saying, what can I do during this week? What can I do for eco governance? What can I do for these 99 days and beyond? It's what breaks your heart open and then really coming into right relationship with water as a healer of 
all life is a, is a central part of this messaging. And this world water law is essential. It's essential. Absolutely, Julie. And, you know, this is the one thing that unifies all of those working for a healthy world because all of our projects will benefit. So we can all agree on this one thing and then also benefit our project. So we all, you know, none of us is uh, immune to what's happening with the water. And very few of us, I think, even in cities, especially in cities, have access to natural uncontaminated water. So the capacity of this world water law to really bring everyone together and to, you know, uh, to, to activate radical exponential whole system healing is extraordinary because when you clean up everything everything yes and water cleans our consciousness and you know everything so we actually create health very very uh, in this very whole system way and i really look forward to continuing this conversation on the world water law with those interested this on the community platform there's a, a space we've also created a global alliance for the world water law and we're uh, there, there's someone, uh, Kimberly is here. She holds an extraordinary water festival, which brings so much water wisdom to the world. And there's so many amazing people who are doing these uh, these incredible uh, water stewardship uh, programs. There's the World Water Community and so much more. And a lot of this you can also find through our community, the Eco Governance Community. Mm -hmm. Dot. Thank you, Shelley. Yeah. So Jan says, cleaning our waters also cleans our consciousness. And Teresa responds and says, cleaning our consciousness also cleans the waters. Beautiful. Beautiful. And a, a big thank you, Shelley, to you and Jan, because you have provided us not only with this focus, but with a water resource kit. And for those who are not in the Zoom room with access to the chat, I'd just like to speak that link into this field because everyone is welcome to make use and have access to this water resource kit. Um, it is www.codes.earth forward slash resources www.codes.earth forward slash resources and do take a look at that it's it's amazing thank you Shelley and Jan so thank you both of you for this amazing conversation it just it's always so heartening to see how, how it touches people and how many possibilities there are in there and my prayer my Per, my, you know, my, my commitment is to supporting it happen and really knowing that there are people in the world that recognize it and will know what to do with it so that we come together and make a difference. And uh, just pointing to something that Valerie said yesterday around, you know, women and mothers uniting. You know, uh, this was a vision I also had of women rising together for water and all of these alliances happening for water that are so natural. Mm -hmm. So let's dream into that and bring that into the world. And given that we've got another piece to share today i'm going to make a uh, invite Daniela to support a smooth and loving transition to the next piece of uh, um, of eco governance to be shared today Daniela. I wanted to share one more um, practical thing that uh, came to me in my water gratitude project. And it came from the land in Alberta when I did my pilgrimage with the Athabasca River. And the message was beautify the sites and sources of water. And so I designed a, what I call a water blessing bracelet. It was simply a beautiful beaded chain with a, a pendant on the end. And so we made them and, and shared them with others. And I invite you to make your own. Perhaps maybe it's from a local stone from your river or your water source. And you wrap that beaded bracelet around the base of the water tap where the water comes out. So every time we turn the water taps on and off, there's this beautiful blessing for the water and a reminder that this is a living being coming into our home and into our bodies. 
Beautiful, thank you. I'd like to sing for you today a song called Oh Water Calling Me Home. It's from my Thank You Water CD. And truly the gift that water gave me when it was teaching me was it brought me back to my heart. And then this morning in the listening field with water, I asked, what, what, what is it that I don't yet really understand about water? And I heard as loud as if water was in the room, you are love. Remember this and right restoration, right relation and right action will flow from you. And then when I asked Nogupila, what do you have to say? She said, flow love. And she showed me in all her glory, same image as yesterday, only she was sparkling and shining. And when I looked around her, so was all of life. So flowing love from our hearts. Thank you so much, Danielia. That is absolutely exquisite. Mm. What a beautiful, beautiful gift. Thank you, Nokopila. Mm. Water is calling us home to our hearts. As we come home together. As we come home together. And as we take yet another step on our 99-day journey of peace through unity toward a thriving world for all of life. So I'm going to, it's a lot of material I know, and yet I do want to uh, um, share with you one piece, which is uh, Julie hinted at yesterday, but it's an essential part of eco-governance. And I'm going to do it briefly because this one accompanies us throughout the week, and I want to put it into the field so we can refer to it always. So at the center uh, of eco-governance, 
we see whole system health. And around the center, we see water, trees, and the vitality code. So water, I bring in the trees now. Water and trees are at the center of eco-governance. As we try to work to restore whole system health, we put water and trees right there at the center as these primordial consciousnesses that have been around and have all the information and wisdom necessary to show us how to organize ourselves, the flow, the architecture, the vast intelligence and just honoring the trees for a moment uh, and their very intricate intimate relationship with water and holding them in our hearts as we sense into how water and trees together can teach us about the vitality code which i'll share with you in a moment you know i, I often talk about these these phrases water is life and the tree of life are not coincidental. They are both such primordial beings that through them allow us to access the understanding of how interconnected all of life is. We can't really talk about them without talking about everything from the sunlight to the mycelium to, uh, to the soil. So just really looking at, the, at this through the portal of that interconnectedness of all of life. And I want to share with you today the Vitality Code, which is such a central part of eco-governance and reminding us um, the first two tasks of eco-governance, which we worked with yesterday, was one, to restore right relationship with the foundations of life. And two, to ensure that the core needs of all humans and animals are met. And we'll go over them a bit, we'll remind you in a bit more detail in a moment. But the Vitality Code and uh, is, is something that helps us really understand how that can happen. So what is the vitality code? When I ask nature how nature organizes itself, in all its glory, in all its elegance, in all its complexity, and yet as if simple, I got a beautiful, beautiful response, which simplifies which is so simple and accessible. And the answer I got was basically, a, there is a code, what I refer to as the vitality code, is the primary code of nature that ensures that all diverse parts of the interconnected whole receive precisely what they need in order to manifest their unique potential in mutual nourishment with the whole. So, you know, this code, you can imagine what it would be like if it was our collective algorithm. If you think about our human body, each part receives exactly what it needs, not for its own benefit alone, but for the benefit of the entire human body. This is how ecosystems work. Each part receives something with deep precision. There is no compromise. It's not like uh, there's a, I'll have a little bit of that and a little bit of this. The heart gets what it needs. The stomach gets what it needs in its own language. So how, what can we learn from the vitality code about how to self-organize um, and, and restore this, this primal code, which is the code that I would say is our most natural code. It's the code that I also talk about that allows you to receive all you need, to give all you can, to become all you are, a code of healthy abundance. So in many ways, today we've been programmed with a very inverse of this code, that original code that is part of our nature, part of our, uh, part of our being, part of our design has been interfered with in some ways through our cultural programming. And um, we're, in, we're, we're programmed to, in fact, with the inverse, to take as much as we can to give back as little as possible and to become a very narrow expression of what our true potential is. So this is about inviting us to imagine how do we restore this most natural code that is us as nature, with nature, this code of profound, deep mutual nourishment. How do we make this into our collective algorithm? How do we recognize that when we give back 99% of the value we create that we don't need, just what we don't need, we create immediate abundance for all. 
and um, imagine what our economy would look like, what our education system would look like, what our social media algorithms would look like, what every aspect of life would look like with this code. And it helps us to really look at life through the, the lens of what does each part need in order to become what it, what it can be. So we start to become curious and empathic about the needs of what does the tree need? What does the bees need? What do the wolves need? What does this person need? What does that person need? And everything becomes um, this incredible map of, of flowing information as nature does of ensuring that all parts are, are nourished and are able to offer their part of this, this incredible web of mutual nourishment. So it's a code which creates a culture of gratitude and generosity and abundance. And you can sense into how water and trees together really hold a lot of the wisdom of this vitality code. How do they interact together and how do they pl play their role in ensuring that every part of life receives exactly what it needs to become all that it can be. So the vitality code um, is really the key organizing principle. I would say if I were to um, encapsulate eco-governance in uh, one sentence in one code, it would be this one. And inviting us just to sense into this code a moment and to imagine how this would, uh, I'm going to share again, just to go back to um, um, the primary task of eco-governance is to restore right relationship with earth, water, fire, air, climate, biodiversity, and the web of life. So how do we begin to learn what each of these need in order to be able to give all they can to become all they are? And why do we need to pay attention to this? So the inquiry around the vitality code starts here. And when we start to listen into this, everything changes. What does each of these need in order to take up its unique, deeply nourishing, essential role for our collective well-being? And the second primary task is to ensure that the core needs of all humans and animals are met through guaranteed access to natural clean water, clean air, healthy soil, vitalizing food, comfortable shelter, physical and emotional safety, and the conditions needed to manifest their unique potential in mutual nourishment with a whole. So how can the World Water Law and the Vitality Code support us in organizing to ensure that we can meet and actualize these two first primary tasks that are so essential to restoring right relationship with all of life and creating a thriving world for all, for peace, for unity, and for a thriving world for all of life. How do these two organizing principles, the, the, the World Water Law and the Vitality Code support us in this, in our journey of the 99 days? So inviting a field of reflection around that and, um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thank you again, Shelley. As we take that in, and thank you for calling the question, how do we do that? It's what Julie and I have been talking about now, pr preparing for these fireside chats, that we really hold that question and keep presencing it in the field in, it, in its various forms. What is possible? What can change? What are we capable of? Julie, you said it really well the other day, too. And as you speak into the field, it's. I just want to say, did you see it in The Guardian, the article that last night over the skies, in the skies over New Zealand, the symbol for the vitality code showed up? I saw that this morning. Yeah. But, well, I'll be darned. We are really in conversation with all of life. Right now. I think it's you're going to have to find that and share it in the in the Mighty Networks. That's amazing. I want to look that up right now. I can't wait. 
and inviting yeah. also just from the chat, you know, people just to, if there's any reflections in the chat that we can pick up on, that would be wonderful as well. So go ahead, Julie. I just, I just want to just really help us ground an essential part of the vitality code that I think is really important because again, just with whole systems health and where we're going with eco governance and how we're journeying through these 99 days, it's essential that we're, the consciousness is completely different. We're thinking differently, right? So even imagining with the vitality code, the thing I appreciate most is that every individual gets precisely what they need. And maybe you want to expound on this a little bit, Shelley, but it doesn't mean equality. It doesn't mean equal anything. And this is the code in nature. Nature gives it precisely what we need to be fully who we are. And um, <clears throat> last night during the plenary session, Dwayne Nelgen was talking about earth voice. And oftentimes we all think, wow, we all have a device. We're gonna have equal voice. We're gonna have equal vote. And even that's not what we need. So we're getting precisely what we need, an abundance more than probably what we need, but it isn't the same. And our unity and diversity is that unity code. So the vitality code shows us how to really function the unity in diversity piece of what we're bringing through with World Unity Week. It means we each are doing precisely what is ours to do and then that? receiving precisely what we need so that we're giving and we're receiving and that's how it all works. So Shelly, I know that's probably stimulating a lot inside of you, but I think this idea of equality, even though we're fighting for equal rights, there are basic fundamental human rights we all deserve. And the vitality code takes us so much further down this path to the, the utopia that we know all life can be when it's in right relationship and in harmony. Mm. Gosh, thank you. I'm looking forward to looking at that, what you sent out. And Julius, it sparks a lot because um, really the uh, this concept of equality is a manufactured concept that is a reaction to domination. And it doesn't, it comes from a specific, you know, it's in within that same framework. Um, so it's like fighting the framework and then you pulled in the polarization. But when you use the language, when, when we return to the language of nature, those concepts don't exist. You know, there is, there's nothing to be equal about because life thrives in, in its exquisite diversity. And so it's a different language. And part of the offering of eco-governance is to offer a language that takes us out of this polarized um, reactive way of engaging with a system of domination and uh, persecutor, victim, savior uh, triad. It, it gives us a, a language that takes us, focuses our attention in a way that is uh, directly related to serving life and expresses life at its best. And just how do we, and, and it and when you do that, a lot of the noise and a lot of the conflict and a lot of the disagreement disappears. So thank you for emphasizing that. Yeah. Can we invite uh, those in the room if there is someone who would like to presence in the field or mm -hmm. at least put it in the chat, please, some, some of your thoughts mm. that will turn into comments. Yeah, but if you'd like to presence, please. And Jan, if you want to share something, please. Mm. Uh, in this beautiful weave. Ah, Joni. Can we bring Joni on? Please, yeah. You're on mute, Joni. This is so heartening to to be part of and so rich and I'm just really flowing. So thank you. Thank you. And it's so resonant with the work I've been doing at the United Nations. And I'm finding that, you know, there are 
not only tribes, but ways. And, and this is, you know, I've been kind of peripherally uh, coming in contact with this work and I'm really excited this week to dive deeper into, um, into this and to, to see how it can inform what we're doing and join in what we're doing as we're gathering a critical mass at the United Nations. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have your ECOSOC status there, but we're creating a cluster Dot's already uh, signed on to it, but um, it would be the unity cluster. And this is exactly the kind of things we would want to be putting forward mm -hmm. into the high level political forum system. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, thank you, Jenny. I look Beautiful. forward to going forward and I want to dive much deeper with you. Looking forward to that very much. Thank you. Mm. I see Jan has his video turned on too, Jan? <laughs> um, I'm not sure I actually have much to say right now. I'm really basking in the conversation of what's flowing and, uh, and it, it, it's beautiful. I'm, so, I'm just feeling so much gratitude for, for what is emerging. And now in the field, it feels like such a, such a profound gift. And I really uh, look forward to uh, many more, you know, encountering uh, this, this you used the word radical yesterday, and I must say that's that's something that I you know <laughs> comes up in my uh, in my vocabulary quite often because it, even I think on the codes website at one point we had the the statement of of uh, Sir Sir David um, Attenborough um, about you know we at this time we can't be radical enough and uh, and and so it just feels like eco-governance and these codes are providing such a, a, a profound shift from everything we know to really allow ourselves to reimagine all our social systems, uh, our entire culture, really uh, integrating the distilled wisdom and accumulated experience and devotion we have to co-creating a regenerative culture where all life thrives. So it just, it, it feels like this is just, it's such a beautiful crystallization that's happening now. Mm. I think radical is right. I like to use the words big, bold, and bodacious. Mm. That's the time. <laughs> mm. Mm. Then, yeah. uh, thank you. As you were speaking, Jan, I was remembering um, when Jan and Shelley brought out the Release the World Water Law in 2020, I was actually there on that Wednesday. It was the first time I connected with the world water community. I'd been doing my water gratitude work with the water relatives of the world before then. And when I first read the world water law, my response was, what if the world water law walks around in us? And so then I was given these five doorways of consciousness and developed what was called the eco lab where we actually journeyed inside the waters of our own body and asked, you know, through these doorways of I am water, I am a water body. Imagine I live in a world built on water ethics and then water ethics walk around in me. And then the final doorway was I am water ethics, you know? And so I'm really hearing that this is really what we're being invited into now, right? Two years later, the whole consciousness has shifted, but I wanted to share something really delightful. So I hosted 15 of these eco labs. They're three hour experiences with groups all over the world. And of course I got to do them every single time myself. And in one of them, I was shown the message. And of course we opened a water field. So that was the, the, the elders were there but they were holding space for us. But in this one that I'm remembering I was shown that the role of mother earth and our tree relatives was also evolving. So in the past, they've the rule and the free will in the universe has been that they can't interfere. And, you know, there's been these sort of really strict um, ways in which humans can be uh, influenced by other than human beings. But in this one, I was shown that they were evolving and they were going to come forward to help us make this shift which, of course, I'm realizing the listening field and the ceremony we just had is, is an example of that. But I was shown that a, a world in which it be, becomes absolutely normal that parents bring their children to Mother Ocean, 
and to the forest for the forest and, and mother ocean to actually teach the children through, through nonverbal. And one of the delightful things that I saw was that I saw an ocean bay and I saw all these reed baskets going like this, floating mm -hmm. in this very calm ocean bay and the newborn babies the babies were in there and Mother Ocean was the babysitter. And when you looked, when I looked at the shore, all the mothers were all laid out, <laughs> having a rest in the sun and being nourished by the land and by the waters while Mother Ocean was being the babysitter. And even the government subsidized this. So wherever the, found, the, <laughs> the resources came from, the families got them so they could travel and take the, you know, take their, their youngsters to the, to the forest so that the trees and uh, could teach them. So they could, ne that we never lost that remembrance that we are one mm. with these relatives. So mm. <laughs> I just love that image of the, the newborns, the whole ocean bay was just full of these beautiful baskets and she was taking care of them and reminding them that they are water. So thank you. Wow. wow. Taking that in, what a gorgeous image, the ocean yeah. as babysitter. <laughs> yeah. And really reconnecting infants. Mm in their infancy to that direct experience of nature uh, yeah, as yeah. mother. Yeah, and Thank wonders. you for that. Mm. Esther places in the field, I work cauldron magic. Mm. The nine qualities that are integral to the goddess's cauldron are very present in today's conversation. This is so exciting. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Is there something you'd like to say more, Esther? Ooh. And Cheryl just showed her video. Mm. Well, um, what I want to share is just an incredible gratitude for the depth and breadth of what you're sharing. And uh, also the incredible practicality of it. Uh, every thought we think. So the teeth brushing, the drinking of the water, and anyone um, who has done uh, whitewater rafting or canoeing or whatever, the flow of life, what a beautiful metaphor, right? On the water, in the water, running the rapids when it's white water, enjoying the calm serenity when you're floating, and just remembering that that, I mean, this is not a new thought by any stretch, but again, every thought we think. So uh, just remembering how the water is not only a foundation of life, it, it, is, the, it is how we live life in the flow. So uh, just so much appreciation and gratitude for everybody. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, thank you. So in response to your question, Good. Um, what, what I am being, um, what is being suggested to me is that I just speak those qualities into this resonance so that it can, um, so that they can uh, ripple through this experience. So it begins with initiation. Uh, gracious love and joy. Mm. That is the first triad. Then it's dominion, healing balm, and nurturance. And the last triad, and they are not necessarily hierarchical, they are all, they all share this the same quality, uh, quanti uh, the same value. Um, the last triad is challenge, wisdom, and compassion. Mm. And I've heard all nine of them in will woven through today's conversation. So mm. blessings to all. Mm back at you beautiful gift thank you thank you esther mm. i'm looking forward to learning more about those when yeah 
I really love hearing the term healing bomb mm. in the midst of those qualities. Mm. Over my shoulder is the mother of the world. And it said that her veil was drawn way back when because the, the violence and pain and suffering was too much. And in these times, in these times, when I think about our 99-day journey, she is lifting her veil and she is offering her healing balm to all beings. Yes, the goddess is returning and with her, she brings a light. Mm. And that is now, that is happening now. Uh -huh. Esther, I might, uh, when you came in, I thought you were going to share. So this morning, as some of you know, we're hosting a listening field every morning. And of course, we asked water directly, how do we restore right relationship with you? And we had this beautiful weaving where um, these sort of this a similar theme in all different words appeared. But there was one young woman from Nova Scotia who, who shared this incredible transmission from the waters there. And in so hearing it, Esther had this beautiful uh, aha around the, the water molecules that are in our breath in the inhalation and the exhalation. Esther, can you share just very briefly what that aha was and the opportunity that we have with every breath we take? Well, <laughs> I think you've already said it so beautifully. Um, <laughs> but um, I, for me, it was uh, when I was listening to this, this wonderful voice speaking um, their message, I just saw that there, that every molecule of water holds the full potential of life, as you've already said, Shelly. And as we breathe in, we can, um, we can uh, take in all that information, whether it is resonant or dissonant, and then we can realign it with the source and exhale. And this can go out, you know, like, especially if you work with trees, they are so good at pulling all of this up through the, the earth and, and, and then transmitting it out into the world. Again, I think I heard Shelly talking about that earlier. I'm not sure who I heard, but mm -hmm. it, is, it was just like, I can do this with every breath. And the power in that was just so, it just got me so excited. <laughs> Beautiful. And with, yeah, with that also, you know, we'll expand more on that in, on air day, maybe, because that's just so incredible. I just want to also say that uh, um, Everin has written something here too. Um, yes, living by the vitality code will be a radical change. Practically, it will take some steps to have faith and find the trust that this will indeed happen. I guess we need the safe tribe. Mm. Mm. This is a safe tribe. And it, as, as you read that into the field, thank you, Everine, because it, what drops in for me immediately is the definition of faith that I work with, the e evidence of things unseen and the substance of things to come. Mm. So yes, let us have faith. Um, so is there anything else that anyone would like to share before we begin to just take a moment to end? Maybe we'll put on that music just as, as we close. Uh, Jan, if you can prepare the... I'm going to invite Jan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to invite Jan to share the Nation Builder link, uh, not Nation Builder, excuse me, the Mighty Networks um, Eco Governance link with all of those here in our Zoom room in the chat, but also perhaps to speak it out loud for those who may be watching this video in the future that wants to find us and really immerse yourself into eco-governance as a community as we move forward in our World Unity Week and our 99 days. So Jan, can you remind, here it is, can you remind us of that link? We'll speak it out loud here. There it is. Okay, so it's ecogovernance.earth, very simple ecogovernance.earth no hyphens all one word ecogovernance.earth and you can find much more about ecogovernance under codes.earth 
forward slash eco governance. You'll also find the vitality code that we shared there that Shelly, there's, there's so much more on the codes.earth site. Um, so go check out all of those links. Thank you, Jan, for sharing that. So um, I, uh, I really hope that those are here, who are here also feel comfortable to share and to continue to sh share your thoughts, um, your resonance. It's very uh, nourishing for us to hear that and to learn from each other. So please, you know, we hope you find uh, a safe space um, in that Mighty Networks community so that we can really build together. And thank you so much for being here and for holding space with us as we see these concepts in the collective consciousness. And let's take a moment to thank water with a song. We are water and blessings, everybody. Thank you so much. Julie and Dot and Danielia and all everybody here uh, for and Jan, of course, for being uh, the co steward of eco governance and for holding space so beautifully all the time. And um, yeah, may we may we manifest this in the shortest possible time. Thank you, Water.
We are.